Malawi. Rwandan opposition leader Victor Ngabiri Umuhoza has petitioned the East Africa Court of Justice to restore her civil liberties, which she says were taken away by the government, including the right to participate in the July 24 election. Ngabiri has been denied participation in the polls because she has been convicted and imprisoned. However, she said that uh, she had also been pardoned by President Paul Kagame. Ngabiri Umuhoza tells me that she wants the court to act quickly to restore her rights to travel and participate in any elections. Yes, I go in the court to seek justice uh, because Rwanda, there is a lack of dependence of the court in Rwanda. And as you know, in March, I was seeking to be rehabilitated by the High Court in Rwanda and my application was uh, dismissed because of lack of independence of the justice in our country. This is why I am looking justice in the Eastern African Court to recover my political and civil rights that I can participate in the next elections. And uh, I have also my husband who is in the Netherlands and he was in the first and I would like to visit him and uh, since I was released in 2018, I have no right to leave my country so I cannot visit him. So this is why I am looking for justice. You said you were seeking rehabilitation but the High Court ruled mm-hmm. against you. What kind of rehabilitation were you seeking? Uh, you know, when I come back in my country in 2010 uh, to participate in the presidential election, a few months later I was arrested and I was involved in the political process and I was condemned for 15 years. So I spent eight years in prison out uh, of which five years I spent in the isolated confinement and I was released by the president in 2018, so after I, eight years. But when I was condemned, I made an appeal to the African Court on Human and the People Rights to clear my name. But the Rwanda government refused to recognize the decision of the African Court. Yeah, you know that Rwanda is going to hold elections in July this year. And you were denied participation in those elections because according to the Rwandan government, you are being convicted. Now, you would like for the EACJ to do what? to restore your right to participate? Yes, I asked the ECG to accord them to rehabilitate me in my rights that I can participate in the elections. And I asked the Eastern African Court to take uh, interim measures, if just a measure, that accord me the right to participate in the elections. So I hope that the court will accept my request and that, that they will order the Rwanda government to let me to participate in the, in the elections. You mentioned your husband. Can you travel out of Rwanda? Rwanda? No, when I was released in 2018, you know, one of the conditions under the, re- the release on parole was that I can't leave in my country without the authorization of the Minister of Justice. Uh, Madam, are you uh, confident uh, that uh, you will get uh, a desirable results from the EAC court? Yes, I am confident because the decision of the High Court in Rwanda that refused me to be rehabilitated violated the treaty established the Eastern African community. And all countries, members of East Africa community, they have to respect the treaty they have signed. Every member of this community has to respect the human rights, the rule of law. Rwandan opposition leader Victor Ingabiri was speaking with us from the capital Kigali. The Rwandan government was not immediately available to respond to Ingabiri Umuhoza's court petition. However, the government has always maintained that its court system is independent and fair. Rescuers were searching on Tuesday for at least 91 people missing in heavy flooding across Kenya, the Interior Ministry said. At least 46 people were killed on Monday morning in a mudslide and flash floods in Mai Mahiu town in central Kenya, the ministry said in a situation report, an increase of one of the previous death toll. At least 169 Kenyans have died as a result of floods currently ravaging the country since the beginning of the Rouge, which has stranded and at times flattened several buildings across the country over the past two weeks. 
So far, four countries, Nairobi, Tana River, West Pokot, and Homa Bay have been affected by the floods. Galisa and Homa Bay counties have reported four deaths each. A total of 102 people have been injured in all affected regions of the country. Nakulu County Police Commander Samuel Undanyi said last night that search and rescue operations were continuing in Kamuchiri and Jerusalem villages in Maimahiyu as more people could still be trapped in the mud following flash floods that swept away huge chunks of land, vehicles, homes and property late Sunday night into Monday morning. The reporting desk has been set up at the scene of the tragedy in Maimahiyu with representatives from the national government, Nakuru County, and the Kenya Red Cross. To date, 30,099 households have been displaced in the country, affecting approximately 150,495 people in Sindo, Homa Bay County. A total of 161 households have been displaced. In total, the government estimates that 190,942 people have been affected by the natural disasters hitting the country. We are actively carrying out such rescue and recovery operations, especially in Nakuru, due to the recent mudslides and have rescued 23 people in Galisa, the ministry said. At Kianduma in Kijabe, Kiambu County, the Kenya Railways Corporation was forced to cross the railway line on Monday morning after it was damaged by the mudslides. According to Kenya Meteorological Department, Kenyans should expect more rainfall in the coming weeks. The flooding is not just a Kenyan affair with neighboring Uganda, Tanzania and Burundi also experiencing flooding that has led to the temporary closure of highways and railways. Kenyans have been urged to remain vigilant and comply with safety measures issued by local authorities.